featuring at Ames, and I'm introducing my videos like this until YouTube learns how to pronounce my name. And I'm joined today by... Hi, I'm Nirali, aka Firewood Sparkler, which is a mouthful, so Nirali, which is also a mouthful and kind of difficult to say, yeah. but hi, <laughs> we love you, we'll learn your name as yeah. YouTube will learn mine, eventually. That's the first thing about being children of immigrants, you get names that aren't necessarily Americanized names. I think you, re you recently said that your name means unique, right? Yes, it does. It means different and unique. unique, and my mother regrets naming me that every day. <laughs> no, she she doesn't actually. She just jokes about how she should have named me Naomi instead, because it's a slightly more normal name, and maybe I would have turned out slightly more normal. Eh, maybe. I feel like you'd be you no matter what. Yeah, probably. But like, <laughs> and even then, Naomi and Narali, although very similar names, they're really isn't a reason your name is actually more difficult to pronounce in the English no. language. We have all of the phonemes already in English. Which is really interesting because I see people butcher your name yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> no, the best is when people assume that like my name starts with an N-E-U, like neurology. I could, I could see so, like- So yeah, it's like, I just kind of laugh because like, the first time someone said that to me, I was really into Grey's Anatomy. At, at like Starbucks and stuff, I just call myself Natalie because I don't want to like put the person writing my name through that because it's it's just too much effort. Now since my name is yeah. Katrina, people know how to pronounce and spell my name now. Before then, mm -hmm. people didn't know how to say my name. Really? And I had to explain it, and a lot of people would ask me that they could call me like just Trina or Kat or Kathy. Weird. And as a child, I said no, because that's not my name. Yeah. It's just not. I like Katrina. Yeah. Like, my Uber drivers, my teachers, my sh neighbors, strangers, friends, bosses, still associate me with a hurricane, <laughs> but it's my name. And yeah. people eventually learned it. How did your family come to America? Um, so basically, my dad's whole family moved to... Um, California in the 80s so my dad went to college here and his brothers went to high school and college in America and then he moved to New York and then um, my parents marriage was kind of arranged so uh, they got married and then my mom came to America and the first thing she did was go to Disneyland Disneyland I first think she did. I understand that impulse. It's interesting because like it, it had to do with business and trying to expand business. Um, like my grandfather had a really rough life and then he moved from Gujarat to Bombay or Mumbai as I should be saying, but I don't. Um, and then he kind of built a life for himself with my grandma and then raised his kids there and like built a business there and then expanded the business when they moved to California. They moved, because they moved there for their education, but like, we're like, we don't know what to do in California. So let's just expand this business. Yes. Let's just Basically. do what we already know how to do. Exactly. And succeed. Yeah. Yeah, and succeed. And they really have. On my dad's side, mm -hmm. we don't know when his family came to America because he's white. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was it the Mayflower? Or was it? <laughs> like, was it the Potato Famine? Was it some other time? Oh, are they Irish? I have no idea, because they're white. We don't know. Like, I'm very annoyed really? about that. Yeah, because my mom, mm -hmm. it's very simple. She moved here from Thailand. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the whole story. Uh, it's not, obviously, but but it's part of the story. Yeah. That, but that's like the main, like, you know where she came from. Yeah you know, that she got here. Yeah. The thing about my, my parents and my ancestry is that the only thing that really separates them mm -hmm. is a village. It, like, my parents' ancestors come from two different villages mm -hmm. in the same state, in the same country. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference. And like, my dad moved to New York, my mom like lived in Bombay, and then they met because they have similar backgrounds, mm -hmm. and they got married. Yep. And that's the only difference, so I'm like, the closest to a pure blood that you can get. So my mom's immigration story, yes. she was malnourished and abandoned in the hospital because she was blind as yeah. a toddler. Yeah. And that's when my white grandparents met her. They met my mom as she was a toddler yeah. and international adoptions were very complicated because 
to adopt, you have to find the birth mother and have them um, yeah, re relinquish their child to you. But you can't do that when a child was abandoned at a hospital. Yeah. So uh, after they had been fostering a relationship with her for about five years, and they adopted her fully when she was seven years old. Oh, wow. And so before then, she was kind of mm -hmm. in an orphanage, being the blind kid. Yeah. Not enjoying life as a Thai person yeah. or a blind person. Of course. It's not, it wasn't great there. My mom eventually came over uh, when she was in high school. Mm -hmm. And to do that, she had to actually relinquish her Thai citizenship in order to get her American one because mm -hmm. of the laws of the time. Interesting. She was a minor yeah. and didn't understand what that meant and was kind of very upset about having to give up being Thai to be an American. I would imagine that. Um, it's interesting because my cousins moved from India here um, and actually lived with my family for a while. Um, and they're still technically Indian citizens, even though they have basically been raised American. Like, they have completely American accents. They've been here for eight years now. And they only just switched from, a, like, what like a certain type of visa to like a green card mm -hmm. so like from being a resident to being like a permanent a resident permanent resident which is like bizarre so but basically without a green card you're not allowed to leave the country so they couldn't go back to india for eight years and they just got their green card which means they're allowed to go back which is like yeah insane to me. Yeah. So like, but like with my cousins, it's like they don't really understand that they came from India and like that it was their home. Like they, they have memories of it there and like they understand that they're from there and that they are Indian, but like it's more like my aunt and uncle who are like, who genuinely miss living there and like having a life there. They still feel connected to India. Exactly. In a way that their kids probably never will. Exactly. Weird because I feel more connected to India than they do, I feel, sometimes. Because just because like I'm a citizen of the United States and I have a visa for India and I can go whenever, you know, and I was able to go to India and like my grandparents could visit us and it was just kind of easy in a way that it just wasn't easy for them. Exactly. It was like easy for me to understand my background and my culture. So it's like kind of the privilege of being a citizen, even though like I'm the daughter of immigrants and that comes with a, like a lot of stuff. There's like a lot of privilege in like being born here versus being born somewhere else and like trying to make a life here. Yeah. And I like really learned to appreciate that. There is a political climate in the day to day. <laughs> it is yeah. less than good. Alternative facts. <laughs> it is bad. It is bad, okay? I have a question. Okay. Yes. It's not about the political climate, so if you want to circle back to that, go ahead. But um, as, I guess, like, first generation mm -hmm. from, like, actual immigrants, how much of your culture do you think you're going to pass on to the next generation, to your kids? I know, for me, it's pretty important because also uh, my fiancé, he is Puerto Rican and his parents also came from Puerto Rico, which was easy because Puerto Ricans are all citizens yeah. despite living in another country that is also part of our country. This is a weird situation. Please vote and contact your representatives. It's a really important um, to me because I know that he's going to be able to pass on a lot of his cultural traditions and food and music and that his parents will be really involved. And for me, uh, I have to research a lot of my own Thai traditions in order to learn about them because I've never been there for one thing. Um, my mom has actually assimilated a lot and did that a lot as a teenager, so she forgets a lot of the things that she knew. So I've done a lot of research into uh, Thai customs and traditions to try to celebrate them, but a lot of the ones we don't do anymore as a family, or have never done because they're rooted in uh, Buddhism, and I and my parents are both Christians, so to pass them on, I want to be able to pass them on with the cultural significance and celebration, uh, even with the Buddhist roots and acknowledging them, without kind of forcing any religion on them. Every weekend growing up, every Friday, I would go and learn about Jainism and um, 
that was a huge part of like fostering like the community and also learning about my culture. Basically having a community is so important with these things, which I guess you didn't have since your mom like had such a, I guess, not different experience. As, as much as my grandparents like love Thai culture and were a part of it while they were there, yeah, they're, they're white. still white. <laughs> yeah, since my mother like grew up in India and like really was into everything there and she basically moved here when she got married and um, had to like figure out how to balance it. Like she, all she could do was find friends who were similar to her. That was like her number one goal basically and she succeeded and like that's how like I made friends with like all of their kids too and like we all learned about our culture together and we grew up in our culture together even though like we all are very American and like went to like you know normal high schools and had the like American experience but like after like after on certain weekends we would have the Indian experience too and that was like really important. I feel like I would pass that on including like I'm really passionate about my religion which is why I would probably try to raise my kids in that religion um, but of course like they're free to do whatever they want if, yeah. um, you know if and when I have children. It's more about the values that the culture and the religion teaches than anything else and as long as that gets across that's important like even like the like Bollywood or like the like the, the the language and the prayers those don't matter as much as the values, but like it's still like such an important part of me that I feel like I wouldn't be able to stop myself from passing it on. Right, you know? religion is both very important to both of us. Yeah, we have separate religions, but we're really good. I'd say we're friends. We're, yeah, we're pretty good friends. Yeah. Because of our shared values yeah, of exactly. like kindness and yeah. empathy and not just just be not horrible. Just don't do that. Just don't be mean. Like if I have kids and if you ever see this, please just don't be mean. Yeah, don't be mean to your moms. As a like first generation American kind of thing, do you ever feel like a lot of pressure to succeed from that viewpoint? Kind of I know for me, I kind of feel a lot of pressure because my mom made all of these sacrifices and giving up her culture to come oh, yeah. here. That like, I gotta be perfect. I gotta be the most American perfect kid. Mm -hmm. And like, she has, she has other kids that she could rely on for this. But I also have to do it to also show that like, I'm a well-adjusted person. Yeah. Even yeah. if I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Um, well, I am the younger one, and out of two siblings, I'm the youngest, so like, I was kind of allowed more things than she was, like, she definitely felt a lot of pressure to be perfect and to, like, do everything right, and I, I felt, I, I don't think, I think I felt that same pressure, but I don't think I, you know, like, let it affect me as much, like, I think, I think it affected me, but in a different way. I kind of tried to rebel against it a little bit, which is why I'm like doing what I do. Like I'm a creative. Like I feel like I'm more of a creative, and like trying to make my way there, even though it's like a field that doesn't make money, <laughs> really, unless you succeed really well. Yeah. Which, like outside of academics, I think I did feel that pressure, especially. Um, like in terms of religion, I like really wanted to be good, um, like partially to impress my parents and like my religious teacher and people, but like I just wanted to be good so that like I wouldn't lose that part of myself because it's so easy to lose like cultural aspects of yourself when you're so busy with other stuff. Like, I've always felt pressure to be like very American, kind of trying to prove that my mom is okay at being a mom. And that, like, she's raised perfectly fine children. Yeah. That, like, they shouldn't be concerned. And also that, like, immigrants are capable of raising good children. And yeah. blind people are capable of raising good children. Yeah. Because my mom is both immigrants. They get the job done. I feel like they could. We high-fived successfully. Okay, go subscribe to Norali. Have an awesome day. And we will see you next time.